But Father, we just give you all the praise, give you all the glory. Lord, it is our desire to meet with you. We want to just abandon ourselves to our own things and Lord, just come into your presence and allow you to, to do great things in and through us. And that will give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, I ask you today that, Lord, the anointing of God would break through into our minds, into our thinking, and Lord, we will see you in all your power and all your glory. In Jesus' name we ask and everybody said amen. amen. We have been personally invited by the creator of the universe to spend time with him. What an amazing thing that God would want to spend time with me, but he does. And they're the things, obstacles that you and I have to break. We have to break carnal thinking. We have to break the natural way we think. And we're going to start to think and understand the Spirit of God. We're told this morning at communion, if you were the only person who was on this planet, Jesus would have died for you. And I believe that with every fiber of my being, because that's who he is. He came to save the lost. And that's, that's what he's about. But this creator of the universe has invited us to spend time with him. If we think about it, the almighty, all-powerful says, come and spend some time with me. You know why he wants to do that? Because he wants to talk to us. The Bible says in his presence, presence is fullness of joy. Can you imagine coming in that atmosphere of his presence? The Shekinah glory, the, the revivals of old that we read about where the Spirit of God fell and people were slain in the Spirit for hours upon hours, where the anointing came upon a woman that was, was basically just welded to the spot for day after day. They said that people used to come in and just walk by her. She was just, this the Spirit of God was all over her. I don't understand some things, but as history reveals us, this is what happened. And I believe it. I believe that God wants to do great things. But if we can come into that atmosphere of the anointing and the presence of God where, where He can just consume us and, and wash all over us and, and where our minds and our imagination and every part of us could be just so, so sort of, if I could say, raptured out of our natural body and taken into another realm where we can see and understand the things of the Spirit. That's what it's all about, I believe. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. He says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. In John 7, verse 37, it says here, it says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. It says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me. If you're thirsty, friend, don't just come to church, come to Him. Come to Him. Come to a place where, where you can meet with Him. Whether it be in a, in a room, in a quiet room, or whatever you call it, your cupboard, or your, your quiet place with God. But friend, don't just be a religious person that has to spend time with God in that way. But, but I want to meet with you, Jesus. I, I, I just don't want to do some religious things so I feel like I've I've, I've fulfilled my obligation. And that's what can happen at times. I know people that said that they had to read the Bible two hours a day, but really I didn't see much fruit in their lives. The Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. And I, I honestly believe that there's something there that God wants to do here. And, and he's crying out, he says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me. I believe that there's a, there's a drawing back to God. There's something in the realm of the Spirit that, that perhaps we don't understand fully yet, but we feel a drawing power of the Holy Spirit that's drawing us back into the presence of God. A hunger, a hunger, a thirsting. We know we sing that song, As the deer panted for the water brooks, so my soul longs for you. Friend, that is not just a song. It is not just something that we sing about. 
You know what God is talking about and what the songwriter is talking about is something on the inside of you that God and only God can create, friend. God creates that hunger inside of you that you want more than anything else. You want to be in His presence. You just want to linger around Him. You want to know Him. Whether you're driving your car, whether you're doing the dishes, no matter what it is, you, you just spend, as your mind goes off into that realm and you just start to dream about Jesus or, or you just start to express my love for you, Lord, and His presence just comes all over you. You, you sense the new days or whatever it is. I know you're just not feeling to, I thank God for feelings, amen? If you're thirsty, he says, come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And I believe that this is where he's at with the church today. He said, you've gone your own way, you've done your own thing, and you've used your own philosophies and your own traditions. But I believe it's time now that God says, I'm going to take my church back. I'm going to take it back. And I'm going to draw my people. I'm drawing the hungry ones. I'm drawing the thirsty ones. And I'm not just bringing you souls that you can come into my presence and have a nice little time. But I want, I'm wanting to empower you. I'm wanting to fill you. I'm wanting to saturate you. I'm wanting to marinate you. I'm wanting to do something so dynamic and so powerful in your life that out of your innermost being is going to flow something, the river of life. See, friends, it's not a matter of just coming to church. It's a matter of becoming the church. It's a matter of knowing that God wants to flow through this mortal body and He wants to bring forth living water. And then as you go, then you know. And as you speak to somebody, you're not just going to speak natural words, but you're going to speak spirit words. And those spirit words are going to fight and they're going to attack the wrong thinking in the hearts and the minds of people. If ever there's a day that needs to happen, it has to be today. Amen? Man's gone his own way. If you're a Broncos fan, and I see somebody with a cowboy's hat on, but he hasn't got a hat. <laughs> He's got a tattoo on his head called Cowboys. But if, the, if Jonathan Pliss or, or Wayne Bennett invited you to come, we'd be so grateful. So, oh, thank you, thank you. If the Queen of England sent you a telegram and said, I want you to come over and have some cucumber sandwiches with me. <laughs> oh, we'd be so honored. We'd get dressed up and we'd be so oh, full of anticipation. But I'm going to tell you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords wants more than just bringing you a cup of tea and a cucumber sandwich. He wants you to come to Him so He can empower you, so you can triumph over the devil, so you can live a victorious Christian life. Amen. So you're not like every wind, or like a whatever it is being tossed around by every wind of doctrine, running here and running there and chasing this and chasing that. But God Himself would come and invade our lives. We need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. I got a fly here, I don't know whether it's an angel or what, but if it's not careful, it'll become lunch. <laughs> not the first time. God's word, word, word will not return to him void. We all know that, don't we? We all know that. Won't we'll return to him void, void. But don't just sit back and accept somehow God will do it all. We can quote scriptures and we can say this and we can say that and still live a defeated life. We can say God's word will not return to him void. He has said that I'll by his stripes I'm healed and then just sort of say, well, somehow or other God's going to do it. Friend, I want to tell you that's not the way it happens. The way it happens is when you rise up, when you allow something on the inside of you to be bigger than the thing that's on the outside of you. When you allow something that's on the inside of you, the Word of God, that's bigger than the cancer, it's bigger than the thing that's trying to attack your life, and you can rise up in Jesus' name and you will fight the thing. It's no good just saying, well, that's what Jesus said, it'll happen. I know it will happen. It will happen when God's people know who they are and rise up and become the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. Faith, belief, confession, 
will bring God's word to pass. He will stir up and I believe raise up people. I don't know about you, but I want to be raised up by Him. Amen. You want to be raised up by God. God, lift up your hands if you say, God, let's pray. Father, raise us up. Father, raise us up. God, lift us up. Help us to break through the negatives and the natural thinking. Help us to hear what the Spirit is saying. Help us to have that experience that will, like Paul had to change him from a, from a man that was doing wrong to a man that was doing great things for you. Father, help us in Jesus' name. Paul really thought he was doing the right thing, but he was doing the wrong thing. We need to have that ear. We need to have that ear to hear what God's Word says. People will go in and possess the promise. This is how it's been done through the ages. And this is what's going to happen again. Amen. In Mark chapter 16, let's have a quick look at Mark chapter 16. Just, uh, you'll have to, my eyes, as you know, I've just had them, cataracts taken off one, I'm on one eye at the moment, I, my one eye doesn't know whether it's coming or going. <laughs> I'm trying to read with glasses, I can't see them, I take my glasses off again, then halfway through reading it, I stop seeing, so I can get my glasses. So there you are, here we go. This is John 16 verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. I'm going to tell you that day at church, those boys could have said, what a wonderful message. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't walk past those speakers, so just be careful, just hold me back if I try to get up there. What a wonderful message that was. These signs shall follow them and believe in my name. And they could have just said, oh, what a, that was an amazing message. Well, they could have even applauded as he was speaking those words and then gone home and just sat around and did nothing. Yeah, God will bring it back to pass. God's word, there's no word of him shall return to him void, but it will accomplish that which is in purpose to accomplish. So God, here I am, sitting on my blessed assurance, just waiting at home now, waiting for you to fulfill what you said you were going to do. He said, no, he said, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, who will? They will. In my name, they will. If they drink anything deadly, if they, if they, if they, and I praise God that the word of God says, so then, everybody say, so then. Amen. So then, after the Lord has spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. Man, they could have talked about that for another week. What a great phenomenon. But it says, and they went out and preached everywhere or they went out and did everything that jesus told them to do the lord working with them confirming the word hallelujah amen friends when we get up off our blessed assurance and when we believe what god says and believe it with every fiber of our being that's where we're going to see god move i believe that god is raising up his church i believe he's stirring his church i believe that he's doing great things God just didn't say, or He didn't promise, uh, I'm, they just didn't say what God promised, I'm sure He's able to fulfill His word, but they had to stir themselves, they had to get up, they took action, and the promise became a reality. We are co-workers with Him. Do you believe that today? God's promises are in the realm of the Spirit. When God speaks, he speaks out of a, a different, how do I say, language, a different atmosphere to where we live. But he, he communicates it to us. God's promises are in the realm of the Spirit. And we have to go into that realm. I want you to hear what I'm saying here today. I'm not talking hocus pocus. 
I'm not talking some, some funny thing. I'm not trying to say you're going to stand on your head or you're going to do this or you're going to do that. But what I'm saying is that God speaks and it's in the realm of the Spirit that He speaks. And we've got to go into that realm. We go into that realm and we lay hold of the promise of whatever it might be and then you bring that promise back to earth or back to reality. You go in and you get it. You, get, you go in to that area through praise, through prayer, through worship, through faith. When we don't spend time in this place worshiping God because that's what we do, or because we're Pentecostal, or because we're, that's what's expected of us. No, friend, I believe it's the Spirit of God that's stirring us. I, I even believe today as we begin to shout, as we begin to do that clap or whatever it was that we went into there, that that is something there that actually takes you out of the natural and takes you into the other realm. You'd be amazed what God does when you go into that other realm. We go into true prayer. David was speaking to me the other day, and he said that he has a one of those things, I don't know what you call them either, David, but a, a USB of some music. And he, and he said he plugged it in and, and it just comes out through his television. And he said he was just sitting there, minding his own business. But as the music started to play, and as this particular song started to, to resonate, he, he just sort of got lost in the spirit. And all of a sudden, you're taking your goal and you're out here somewhere else. And you're not trying to be the man, the tough man, or whatever it is. All of a sudden, your emotions and your, your reality and your love for God and everything about you becomes real. They said he found himself sitting there weeping and weeping and weeping in the presence of God. I want to tell you, church, we've got to come to that place where we go into the realm of the Spirit, where we go into the presence of God, amen. Where we go in, where the fullness of joy, where there's untold victory and whatever else in there. We've got to go in there. That's where they are. The things of the Spirit must be birthed in the Spirit, not by carnal, worldly ways. You can build a great church without the Spirit of God. No matter how good it seems, we must have the Spirit. I want you to have a look with me in 1 Corinthians. I've just been finishing my preparation and Nancy came in with a, and I, again, I don't know what I'm talking about, a, a podcast or something. And it was Rocky. Rocky was preaching his heart out. It was so amazing. A wonderful, just a, a wonderful message. And, I, and I've just written all this out. And, 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 and I want you to listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I come to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. I believe that what Paul is speaking about here is exactly what I've been sharing with you. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. And he was trying to say, friend, there's a way there that can be natural. There's a way there that can be enticing. There's a way there that can make sense to your natural mind. But when I come to you, I did not come to you in that way. I did not come to you with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. That word testimony means the mystery of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. Again, he's saying, I don't want to come and just tickle your natural mind or your natural thinking. I don't want to just influence you by good ideas. I don't want your faith built on that of human wisdom, 
but in demonstration of the spirit and of fat of power that your faith will not be in the wisdom of men but in the power of God then it goes on a little bit further and it says eye has not seen ear has not heard neither has entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Friend, I'm saying it again. We've got to go into that realm. We've got to go into the realm of the Spirit if you want God to reveal the mysteries. If you want God to reveal Himself to you. If you want God to show you the strategies, the way to touch the world, we have to go into that way. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Let me say it again. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. You cannot know the things of God without going into that realm. Am I making sense here today? Am I speaking to some Presbyterian? <laughs> Am I speaking to the, of global connections here this morning? Am I speaking to a bunch of people that want God? Yes. Come on, there's one way to go in, it's through the Spirit, amen? Your natural mind will tell you a thousand ways not to do it. God will tell you one that will. Tell you how to do it, where to do it, and when to do it. We need to have that ear to hear. We need to rise up. We need to understand what God is saying in this hour that we live in. You can go on and it says there, uh, For you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things which have been freely given to us. You've got to be spiritually discerned, it says there in verse 14. But the carnal mind does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. God's Spirit, God's power. One of our major problems is our natural mind or our logic mind, our carnal thinking. This kind of thinking attacks spirit thinking. I know a lot of people that that where the Spirit of God has spoken to them so clearly. It might be through the, through the prophetic. And they've come to me after and they've said, Neil, that prophetic word that that prophet gave me, just this confirmation of what, what God has spoken to me about. And I know that this is what I'm going to do. I know that I'm going to do this. But after a little while, you, you go up and you say, what do you do? And they say, oh, no, no, I, I thought about it more. And because you see, the carnal mind will attack the things of the Spirit. It'll attack whatever the spirit is saying to you, the natural mind, the carnal thinking. It attacks the spirit thinking. Something like give, and it shall be given back. Pressed down, shaken together, running out or whatever. To, to gain life, you need to lose your life. That, those, those things don't make sense. Giving away to become wealthy doesn't make sense to the natural mind. But to the spirit mind, for the spirit man, you know that that's the way we're called to live. We're called to live by faith. Hearing what the spirit of God says is what we need. What the spirit is saying to the believer, to the individual, or to the church body. So if the spirit says, give a person a hundred dollars, we hesitate. We say, God, give me a sign. I heard... Uh, Oh, I can't let lady preach. Preaches the thousands. I heard her say one day, you don't have to worry. God's not going to kill you if, if, you, if you didn't really hear for him right and he gave somebody a hundred dollars. He says, you know, give me, give me a sign, Lord, give me a sign. I tell you to go and share the gospel and it's just somebody to think, oh, I'm too scared or whatever it might, and we don't do it. No, friend, I say, we've just got to go and do it. You know, it may be years later, 
years later, you give that person a hundred dollars and, and off they go and you might never see them again. You might see them a few times. And maybe years and years later, you're somewhere. And all of a sudden this person walks up to you and they grab you by the hand. And you can see the look in their eyes. You can, you can see the look on their face and they say, brother, sister, some years ago you gave me a hundred dollars. You remember that? I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> you have got no idea what that meant to me. At that particular time, I lost my faith in God. I lost confidence in God. I was going through a time and uh, I didn't know what was going on with my life. But I, I had a need and I, and, and I needed to pay a debt of a hundred dollars. And I, and I had no way of, of meeting that need. I, I was living from just day to day and I had no way of meeting that need. And I, I just cried out to God. I said, God, could you help me? Could you, could you please help me? And those words virtually wouldn't have got out of my mouth 10 seconds. And you walked over and you gave me a hundred dollars. And oh, I tell you what, something happened to me that day. It totally changed my life. My confidence began to grow again. I fell in love with Jesus again. I realized that Jesus could meet all of my need according to his riches and glory. And I didn't just go on and on and on and on and on. Then we don't understand. We don't know. All God says is be obedient. Be obedient. If I talk to you, I talk to you for a reason. Hearing God's voice. It's very, very important in the hour that we live in. I don't think I've ever heard God say in an audible voice to me, Neil, do so and so. Although I do believe that many have had that kind of experience. For me, it's a thought. For me, it's a thought. God said, let us make man in our image. God had a thought. You ever think about it? God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He obviously had a thought. God had a thought. Let's make man in our image and in our likeness. We're going to give him to me. And so he speaks to his son and the Holy Spirit. So he speaks it out. He had a thought. I don't know about you, but I just think the other day, what would it be if you were still thinking about it? Where would we be if you were just still thinking about it? You know, 6,000 odd years ago, I had a thought, boys. About time we did something about it. What do you think? Ah, I don't think that was a good idea. I saw the video. <laughs> He had a thought, and he said, and he spoke it into being, and then he did something about it. He started doing it. There's some things that we, we can remember. God said, let us make man in our own image, but then, then God said, let there be light. He had a thought. I don't know how long ago that was, but he had a thought. Let there be light. Let there be light. And so, out of that thought, he created something. He created it out of his words. He said, let there be light. See friend, what I'm saying is we have to work with God. When you get a thought, you do something. You do something with that thought. You've been thinking about it instead of that, just thinking about it, he put thought, he put words to his thoughts and he did it. Walk by COC. Once upon a time, was just a thought. Having a school was just a thought. And you've got no idea how I thought that. <laughs> because I had to become the principal. And I left school when I was 13. I did everything I could in the natural, but there was a thought. And until I said okay to God, and if I would have just still been thinking about it, there would be no school there today. 
You have to do something about it. Global connect connections was once the thought. But we packed our bags and we came, man. Every thought is a seed. If that seed is planted in your soul or your heart and watered by the Spirit, it will become a reality. I'm talking spirit talk here. I pray that you can understand what I'm saying. Every thought you have is a seed. If that seed is planted in your soul or your heart and watered by the Spirit, it will become a reality. An airplane was first a thought. The woman who had an issue of blood had a thought. She was thinking a lot of things. She had spent a lot of money. Instead of getting better, she was worse. But she had a thought. She had a thought in her mind because she'd heard about Jesus. Friend, you've got to hear what Jesus can do in your life and allow your thought life. You can think, I can do that. I can do that. She thought that she'd heard about the miracles. She'd heard about what Jesus was doing. She heard about all these great things. She had obviously some religious knowledge because she understood about the hem of his garment. I'm not going to go into that today. I'll leave that for Chris. But she knew there was something about the garment. There's something about the hem. Something about the way it was designed. And she had a thought. And she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And then she started to speak it out. She started to speak it out because my Bible says, and she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Friend, I want to tell you, at that moment then, she had to push through. She had to push through the environment. She had to push through the crowd. She had to push through every negative force. She had to push through every stronghold that was coming against her. The thing that says you are unclean. The thing that says you are unworthy. The thing that says you are not good enough. The thing that said this and that and goodness knows what else. She had to fight through every one of those things until she could get to that place where she could touch the hem of his garment. And friend, that's how you and I are going to face life. That seed that's planted in your heart, it will bring forth. It will raise you up. It will cause you to win. Raise up and stand your ground. She had to push through everything. She had to push through the strongholds. I can imagine it that day. There were so many people crowding Jesus. So many obstacles. What happens to a lot of Christians is we get a word from God. We get, we might be prayed for, we might do this or do that. And, and we get so excited about it. But then all of a sudden, the obstacle comes. That is the devil's job. He is a bad devil. The devil comes to bless all of God's people. Oh, no. <laughs> the devil comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy. He is a robber. Yeah. He is a thief. And he comes to steal the word. He comes to attack the word that God has given to you. Comes to rob you, kill you. She had to fight. See this plan. There's an enemy today that's fighting against God's people. The gates of Hades try, trying to prevail against you in your marriage, in your finance, your children, your workplace. Remember, friends, you are the head and not the tail. Rise up, stand your ground. Don't fight your husband or your wife or your boss. They are the problem. Your enemy is the kingdom of darkness. 
take authority over principalities and powers because God is fighting for you. I've got one little thing. I'm going to take a few more minutes and I pray that you don't mind. But 1 Corinthians 11, 11. 1, one sorry, Chronicles 11, 11. There's a guy there by the name of Jashobi. That's the one time I'm going to pronounce it and no more. He was one of David's mighty men. He lifted up his spear against 300 and he killed them all at one time. Human bravery is not enough. When the odds are 301, it sounds impossible. And the situation may also seem impossible to you that you're facing. And in the natural it is. But when it comes to spiritual matters, you and I will never know the potential we have in God till we step out and take risks in the front line of his war for your family, your health, your wealth, for the city we call Sunshine Coast, for Australia. Friend, by the anointing, Jesus breaks again. We're going to sing a song right now from Team Can Come. The atmosphere is beautiful up here. We're going to sing God is fighting for us. God is fighting for us. As Joel Osteen would say, did anybody get in and get out of that? Yeah. Hey? Anybody stirred to, to go further and deeper? Yeah. I don't know. Your family is worth fighting for. Amen? Your children are worth fighting for. The Sunshine Coast is full of beautiful people that need God. Today, I believe that God wants to plant seeds in your life. Seeds of greatness, seeds of things that you can do. A long time ago, over 40 years ago, came back from a camp, I've spoken about this many times, but God planted a seed in my life. I, I felt the anointing like I've never felt it before. And I came home and I said, God, what can I do for you? What can I do? And he said, go up and down the street and gather the children which we did. Two years later, there was a children's church of hundreds and hundreds of children. You see, I could have said to God, which I did, by the way. Everything God tells you to do will be birthed in the arena birth in the ring, whatever you call it, where the battle will break. When God speaks to you, the enemy will come for sure. He'll try to tear it away from you. Try to tear it out and snatch it out. And I tell you what, he doesn't do it nicely. But if you could just say, God, you're fighting for me today. You are on my side. A lot of people, a lot of people, many, many people, God speaks to.
like walking in a gladiator's arena. And the crowds are roaring against you and they're carrying not even roaring for the enemy. But that's where the battles are like. 